brand new thing. Gotta go places and do things. Maybe to forget it. Hi there, my name's Albert Aldridge and in today's video I'm going to be telling you a great way you're going to be able to eat more food and lose fat and weight at the same time. Also, I'm going to tell you about how I do health screening alongside my nutrition plans for people because I'm a qualified accredited nutritionist now because I graduated from university and I'm going to be taking you through this workout footage right now and if you're new thank you very much for clicking on the video I'd appreciate it if you go down below hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell because I create videos around helping people to lose fat tone up and build muscle mass I'm not talking big body root buildery muscles if you don't want that and I teach people to do that around their current lifestyle so they can still eat the foods they love and enjoy their lives whilst losing body fat to make it almost seem and feel effortless so please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and if you're an old subscriber an old viewer you've been supporting me for a long time i always appreciate your encouragement because you guys always motivate me by watching and commenting down below in this video today you are seeing some front squat footage I'm working roughly with about 88 kilograms at the moment, but I'm struggling a little bit um, with when I do ascend out of the bottom of a front squat. I tend to lean forward quite a bit. So if any of you have done front squats for a long time, because I've been doing them consistently for about, I would say, six months now, I'd say. Um, if you've got any tips about how to stay upright at the bottom of a squat, it's probably more to do with flexibility um, around the hip area for me my hip flexors as well as my upper back I need to improve on but if you've got any specific tips then do let me know I'm going to be getting some different squat shoes they're called Addy Powers I think which have a slightly higher raised heel which will really help with my Olympic lifts after doing the front squats I did five sets of five I think with 88 kilograms on this day I might have been 85 then I moved on to some dumbbell clean and press I really like doing that movement because it's needed in CrossFit Plus it, plus it gets your shoulders used to working independently to each other. Just here you're seeing some barbell curls and a little bit of a physique update. I'm going to do a dedicated video on my current physique um, in the future. That's how I'm looking and then I'm always doing some muscle up practice at the end. I'm slowly getting them but I'm finding it's just the uh, shift in weight um, when doing a muscle up which I'm kind of struggling with. But it's slowly getting there. Thank you so much again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the video. Please make sure you smash that like button. If you follow me for a while, you'll know that as an AA Fitness brand, I offer online nutrition coaching services to help people tone up, incorporate resistance training into their current lifestyle if they're seeking that guidance. But primarily, I'm teaching people about how to lose fat and gain lean muscle tissue, therefore achieve body recomposition around their current lifestyle so they don't have to make drastic changes and they can still lose fat eating the things that they enjoy eating like chocolate biscuits and sweets but in moderation and about 70-80% of the time leading a healthy nutritional approach including complex carbohydrates, lean protein sources, fruits, vegetables and I work with a variety of people who have different food needs such as some people have lactose intolerances, some people lead a gluten-free diet. I do some plans that are sports specific, it really depends on the individual's goal. I do that for people in the UK and West Sussex and I also do that internationally worldwide because I can do nutrition plans for a worldwide audience. And now I've got another string to my bow. Need like a guitar at this point. <laughs> Thank you, I do concerts. A thousand pounds a gig, lol. This other string to my bow, I started doing at a local gym, which I've come away from now, just because of having to do more of my personal training online and one-to-one -one sessions, as well as being offered more sports coaching hours. But I've got the equipment from there, which I'm gonna start doing for people in the local area, where that would be like in Horsham in the UK, in West Sussex. I've got four primary bits of equipment, but I'm looking to expand this and I'm trying to figure out a way if I can do this kind of online. That's more difficult though. The first piece of equipment I use to test people is something called a spirometer. What this does is this tests somebody's peak expiratory flow as well as their FEV1 measurement and we use something called a spirometer testing lung capacity. So what the person has to do is they stick this into this end and then 
I turn it on. Then after the breathing in, the person has to breathe out through this monitor maximally and as much as possible for as long as possible until the timer goes off and then we take the peak valley measurement as well as the FEV1 measurement. It's a great tester for somebody, it's a great tester to see if somebody suffers with asthma and it also is a good way of being able to see if somebody's lung capacity is improving over time. So this can be used in just a health and well-being setting as well as a sports specific setting. The next piece of equipment I'm using to test people is a glucometer. So in a nutshell, what we do here is take a finger prick blood sample of the person, either when they're, we pick whether they're gonna be fasted or whether it's gonna be two hours after eating, or you could take both measurements to compare the readings, and it's just to see what their glucose levels are at that point. And this could be tested, say, month to month to see an improvement. But we're just testing to see if their resting glucose levels is within the correct range which is non-diabetic or whether they are pre-diabetic or at high risk of developing diabetes. So how it works is you open it up and here, I'm not going to get everything out, but you've got a strip which goes into this monitor because you could turn it on and it's expecting you to put the strip in because what I do with this thing here is I get a lancet, I call it, I put it in here, which is a needle, I prick the person's finger, get a little blood sample, get the blood sample on this strip, stick it into this monitor, and then it quickly reads it, but thoroughly, obviously, and then comes up with a reading. That's really cool to do. Next. This piece of equipment is used to test people's diastolic and systolic blood pressure, which makes up the blood pressure standard reading, and it also get people's resting heart rates from using this blood pressure monitor. So I've got the pad in here as well, but this is what the blood pressure monitor looks like. So I get the pad that's in here, connect it up to here, put it on the person's arm when they're at rest after they've um, probably sat down for a while so their heart rate has come back to resting levels. Then for about 40 seconds, it does some pulsating bits on the um, pad that goes up here on the upper arm and it's testing systolic, diastolic blood pressure so it's the amount, um, with a very simple explanation, it's the amount of pressure that's going onto the arterial walls as the blood is going out um, of the heart and it's testing it when it's in a contracted state and a rested state. And then it gives you a resting heart rate as well. I will do a video, if you guys want me to, of my resting heart rate, so I won't reveal it in this video just to keep the element of surprise. And then finally, in this awesome looking box, I have got a tape measure, which I already took out, but I use something called a calibrated body fat caliper. This is the Harpenden body fat caliper. There are the instructions there. And we use different skin fold points on a person. So the standard one I do is I take a skin fold measurement from somebody's bicep, from the top of the bicep, then the same point on the back of the upper arm from the tricep, and then I do it from a point called the subscapula. Um, we basically take specific measurements in centimeters, so we measure it using a tape measure about where to specifically get the skin fold site from so it's accurate. And then we do another one from the suprailiac, have I pronounced that correctly? I'll chuck up the word on the screen so I could ever pronounce it correctly, which is basically just to the um, it's near the oblique muscle and we're near to where the um, rectus abdominis is as well. We take four skin fold sites, do it usually about three times to get an average reading. And basically you have to keep this level. I don't hold it like this when I probably do it, but it's just to show you about how it works. And then you open it up, get the skin fold, leave it on, take the reading, press it, take it out, and then put the reading down. And then I take an average reading from that, do the appropriate calculations used in scientific literature in order to work out the person's body fat percentage. And this has been tested against the gold standard um, processes in order to test somebody's body fat, um, which is called the bod, fod, bod pod or hydrostatic weighing, and it's very close. Um, I'll put some pieces of literature in the YouTube description if you guys are interested to see um, the accuracy of this. But obviously, if you want to be 100% accurate, you actually have to kill the person and weigh their body fat that way. But nobody wants to do that, because I don't know how to revive a person. 
back to life. That's the health screening side of my nutrition services I do now. If you're interested in this, because what I do at the moment is usually see person, people, sorry, monthly to do the same readings or every couple of months whilst giving them a nutrition intervention, um, like a diet plan or something, just to see that it's improving over time. So if you're interested in that, then I've got my email in the YouTube description and I'm going to be creating a website. So if you're watching this in the future, like in 2019, 2020, I will most likely have a website which you could book me through in the YouTube description down there. Plus with these four pieces of equipment, I'm looking at getting some equipment that can test urine samples and you can get some bits of data from there. I'm looking at getting a lot of other bits also to do with fitness testing. So I can do fitness testing, health screening testing, and then provide a nutritional intervention, exercise intervention to help improve somebody's well-being, their lifestyle, or something more specific if they're trying to recover from a certain injury or make it sport specific. That's today's video guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you go down below, hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, and I look forward to seeing you all in my next one.